What's up, Wayne Barron here for CFFCS.com's Coding Source, here to bring y'all the much anticipated ASP Classic lessons. Sorry that it's taken me so long, I've just had other projects that have taken priority over my time. And so, anyway, let's go ahead and uh, uh, get into what we're going to be doing here. Okay, to begin with, I am using Dreamweaver CS4. But I am only using it for the visual aspects. I do not use Dreamweaver for for, for its coding uh, powers. Uh, I do not like how Dreamweaver uh, submits ASP code or any type of server-generated code. I think it's crappy. Okay, so what I do is that everything that I do is hand-coded, which means that uh, all of my stuff is done without using any type of program besides uh, a SQL Server to generate my SQL scripts that I use or access. It depends on which uh, database I'm using. Uh, but for all of my commercial projects, I do use SQL Server for all my commercial stuff. And so, but anyway, uh, what we're going to be doing here is that we're going to be creating the, uh, the script for the site that I uh, demonstrated in the, uh, the intro video that I posted yesterday. And so what we're going to be doing here is that we are going to uh, start off with uh, creating our form. Then we're going to submit our form to a processing page. And then once we submit the form to the processing page, I will then create the access database, also the SQL Server database. So we're going to be using one or the other. We're not going to be using them both, but just going to be using one or the other. So I'm just going to show you how to create the access database and the tables, create a uh, relationship between the two. And then do the same thing inside of SQL Server. And so, but, uh, and then uh, we're going to show you how to select the records, show you how to insert them, update them, and also how to delete records from your database as well. So, every single bit of that is going to be covered in um, all of our uh, lessons here. I'm not sure exactly how many it's going to take, probably about maybe three or four lessons. But I'm going to do the whole thing as one big tutorial, and then I'm going to have to break it up so I can upload it to YouTube. And so, but anyway, uh, let me go ahead and get started. So, as you can see, we've got a plain document here. And so, our docu document, sorry about that, that I created <coughs> is from, um, is ASPVB script. And I always try to do strict. Everything that, that I do uh, starts off with a strict. That way, uh, all of my coding that I do has to level up to that strictness of the XHTML 1.0. And so, but anyway, let's go ahead and create our document here document my words are not coming out right and so okay first thing we want to do is let's go ahead and give our document a title and in this case it's going to be the ASP classic lessons okay now <clears throat> so we want to create a table well a form and then a table but since we're going to be doing a lot of our stuff it's going to be working with Ajax so that we can submit our information without refreshing the page we have a utility and uh, that's inside of, well, let's go ahead and save out our document here. We're going to save that as default.asp. So default.asp, save it. Now our, <coughs> our JavaScript is inside of our utilities. We've got two files or several files sitting inside this one. Let's make sure I'm in the right folder here after it opens up. Okay, lesson one utilities. Yep, I'm in the right folder. Anyway, uh, don't worry about that or that or that. All three of them will be deleted. Okay. This file right here, which is Ajax Submit. A lot of people don't like that I use it. I use it because of the simplicity of it. It's very simple to use, very easy to use. And it's a no-brainer to use, okay? Um, and I'm getting ready to show you exactly how to do that. And so, but anyway, we're using this form right here. So once we use this form, and this right here can also be deleted. So anyway, whenever we use this, then we can easily add in the information inside of our form tag. A lot of the jQuery scripts or uh, newer Ajax scripts use uh, uh, JavaScript inside the head tag and uh, you can do all sorts of really cool stuff with that and but for the simplicity of it it doesn't give you any added features like uh, uh, how uh, Facebook works 
but it does work and will get you able to jump into this quickly is by using this and all this stuff is going to be available in the download that is going to be available on the very last tutorial's description it's not going to be available in uh, all the lessons prior to to the very last lesson of this but you will be able to download the entire script everything that i'm using here all files and everything will be available in that so let's go ahead and uh, hit f2 to uh, make it where you can highlight your text and choose copy and i've got my files Never mind. Uh, so anyway, let's go ahead and jump in here, and we want to go down to our first line right up, right up underneath title, and then we want to type out script and source, and uh, we can browse for it, or we can just type in utilities slash. Okay, now we got type and text JavaScript. Okay, now. So, okay, now whenever our page is loaded, it will automatically load this script right here so that we can use it in our form. So let's go ahead and create our form. And now, our form name, we're going to name this one Reg Form. And action it's going to be pass.asp and method is going to be post then on oops on submit we are going to write out all this stuff xml http post and Asp and reg form. This is the name of our form, and then we've got a div tag. So we want reg div, and then we've got image source. Okay, that should be accurate, I hope. First time I've actually ever typed up the entire thing. Usually uh, I uh, actually took the script from uh, a website that I found and I just copied the uh, <laughs> this part of it. And the only thing I ever do is change out my name and my action and change out uh, the action here, the name, and my div tag. And But everything else basically stays the same. And so hopefully this will run. And if it doesn't, then we will have to debug it and figure out why it don't run. So anyway, uh, now we, what we want to do is that we want to create our table. See, our form is going to wrap around our table. So let's go ahead and create our table. Uh, okay, now. And so what we're going to do here is that we need a... Um, um, and then create some CSS code. So let's go up here, style. Oops. <laughs> okay, now, so what we want to do here is left TD. And we want to open it up, and we're going to give it a border, one pix, double, we're going to give it, uh, we're not going to give it black, we're going to give it 7D, 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 okay, sort of like a gray color, 
Okay, uh, and yes, as you can tell, I'm having to look over at my actual script that I wrote from yesterday. And uh, that way I don't make no mistakes. That way we can just go right on through this without having to worry about anything. So, uh, color is going to be... Let's see, and then... Uh, let's see here. Width. It's going to be 80 pixels. Okay, now this right here is going to be used in our table. This is our class. We're going to do class table. Now, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. We have six rows. So, two, three, four, five, six. Now, our last row, we're going to get rid of this right here. We're going to make it into two columns. So this is going to actually take up two columns instead of uh, having two separate columns here. We just want one column and so that we can add in our submit button right here. So now let's go to the first one. So this is our first name. First name. Last name. Email. Username and password. So then we go over here, we do, uh, well, let's jump up here right quick. We also got some styles, CSS styles that we want to use in our, uh, our form field. So we got field, column, okay, and we want to border, one pix double and we got this one is actually huh, one two three and then we want our color to be CCC and our background nobody freak out on my background color here because it is not a bad number as people think it is so don't freak out on me all right now we go down here and so this right here is just copy this that's going to be our class so we go input type text and class uh, tab index is going to be one and let's see here name is going to be f name okay so now this right here it's going to be our first one. So since we're going to be using this all the way down, we're just going to copy and paste it all the way down. So the only thing that we're going to do now is change the name. Okay. So this right here is our first name, last name, email, username, password, and we have our type is going to be submit, name, submit. I name all of my submit buttons submit because inside my process page, I create a variable that I use with the submit button so that I don't have to write out a request out form submit on everything that I do. So uh, keeping your form submit button as the same name makes it a lot easier whenever you process all of your scripts you can keep all of your scripts your database scripts inside of one file instead of having multiple files which i've seen a lot of people do and so this way you'll be able to just to uh, create a variable and then use it if this variable exists then do this else if it, another variable exists so forth and so on so then we go um, uh, value and this is going to be <coughs> register and class and we're going to use our field column okay now when we view this this is what it looks like okay so we got our first name last name email username password okay now what we want to do here is that we want to add in some color to our body okay so our body is we're going to have our body as as um, 
black. So let's do background color, pound, one, two, three. And then we want our color to be CCC. Okay, now, this way, and always save as you progress, as you go on, that way you don't make any mistakes. And so then we click here, and then that looks a lot better than playing white, definitely with the color scheme that I have going on here. <clears throat> Excuse me. So now, the next step that we want to do here is, let's see here, yeah. Okay, depending on the screen resolution, whether or not you got a uh, small screen re resolution or a large screen resolution, you want to try to make your tables or your div elements expand or go smaller depending on the screen resolution. So here, we want to, uh, let's just create a style with a width of 90%. This right here will allow our table to go 90% of our table, of our, uh, I'm sorry, of our, um, um, crap, <laughs> of our monitor, of our page that it's displaying on. And so, um, it'll be something like this right here. But, in the case here, since this is just a small form, we want to make it, um, Let's do without our without our uh, our width. Our width is going to be used in our main table, which is not created at this moment because we haven't gotten there yet. So I sort of jumped ahead of myself right there. So anyway, so this right here is our uh, beginning page. This is our form, and whenever we run our form, which is going to be right here. We have our form here. Now, right now, the form will not do anything because we don't really have anything for the form to do. Uh, two reasons. One, we have not added in our div tag yet. So let's go right below our form here. And let's add div ID. And this is reg div. And then closing our div tag. Now, Everything that we do whenever we process our form is going to be processed right here in this div tag here. And so this way we can make sure that everything stays in our div tag. And um, which makes our page look a lot better whenever we're processing it. Instead of it jumping into another um, page uh, like most pages do, this right here is going to have it inside of this page. It's going to process this page. And then it's going to do a response out right, which is going to display here. That's the cool thing about using Ajax or jQuery. So, but uh, due to the fact that our background is black and default colors are black in text, we have to go in here. And since this is an ID, we do pound reg div. And then we want to go down here and we want our color to be CCC. So, pound CCC. Now, whenever it processes the page down here, we will actually be able to see it. So now, let's go ahead and create our pass.asp page. And so, if you click on Control N inside of Dreamweaver, it'll automatically open this up. And it doesn't really matter what we choose over here. Choose ASP BB script is what I do. Highlight everything here, delete it, and then create your opening and closing of your ASP brackets. Control S to save. We're going to save into the same area, pass.asp, and then save it. Now, inside of our pass.asp page, this is. Um, what we're going to do here is that we're going to process all of our form elements from here are going to be brought over into here. And see, everything is named F, -N F name, L name, email, username, password. So very simple, very easy to do. So let's go ahead and do that. F name, L name, email, username, and password. Now, 
let's do a request dot form okay and just copy and paste this copy and paste can be a really good friend of yours it makes your work a whole lot simpler a whole lot easier so that you don't have to worry about a bunch of typing which can really get strenuous so now like I told you before we got a submit button so let's go down here get sub and then we go here copy this change our password to submit now this right here will make it to where every single time that we click on the submit button we will be able to see what it does inside of our form so now go down here if get sub equals register then and and f now let's do a response dot write hello register and save it now every single time that we click the register button right here we will be able to see it right down here so let's bring this page open and click on register uh, let's refresh it hello register now what we're going to do here is that we are going to look at each one of our form elements and we're going to see if they have information in them so if f name equals nothing then response dot right please provide your first name else if l name equals then please provide your last name else if email equals then please provide your email address else if user user name then please provide your username else if password is empty please provide your password and oops else and if now the else just means that uh, response dot right um, your form was processed successfully. Holy cow, that's not spelled right. S U C C E S S F U L Y. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Please provide your first name. If the first name form uh, field is empty, last name is empty, email is empty, username is empty, password is empty. Like I said, copy and paste is a really good friend of yours. Just make sure that you change each one of them because you don't want somebody to type in their first name but miss their last name and then all of a sudden you copied and pasted this one over to here and then it says please provide your first name and they're like hold it i just provided my first name i didn't provide my last name so make sure that your first name goes each part goes with each one so that you don't confuse the people so now with that saved we go over here and it tells us to provide our first name so wayne register provide our last name baron provide our email address e at ffcs.com register okay username large kiss register password and before we do yeah we need to make sure that our password field you your form has been processed successfully our password field needs to be changed to a password so let's bring this down go over to our default page go into our password field and change our input type to password save it open up our page reload it and now we can type in our password with our aristocrats so now as you can tell we've already gone through this part so now 
let's do some more goodies to make sure that our information is passed properly. So the first thing that we want to do is that we want to grab a hold of our email to make sure that our email that's being submitted is a real true email address. And so the thing we're going to do is go down here. And this is the first time that I've typed this out as well. So gubby gubby zero Okay, what this is going to do is that it's going to look to make sure that there's an at symbol in our email address and to make sure that there's a dot in our email address. So basically, eee at cffcs dot com. So anyway, so whenever we run this, we want to go down here and we want to look. So our email address is passed right here. We make sure that we've got an email address. Else if Gobi is greater or less than zero, then uh, response dot right. Please provide a real email address. Now you can make this red span style equals uh, color colon pound. What is red? Forgot what red is. We need red, so span, style, and color. Okay, red is foo, F00. Zero, zero. So we go over here, and we close it, span. Now, whenever it shows this, it's going to show it as a bright red that's really going to catch their attention to let them know, oops. Let me make sure that I actually put in a real email address and especially really messes up your uh, spammers trying to uh, insert a fake email address and so forth. So anyway, now whenever we bring this up, we go let's get rid of here. And so we go EEE -E -E, um, at cffcs.com. Now if we remove the dot, Oops, so we didn't do something. So let's go, whoop, let's go back over here on line 46. And, ah, let's get rid of that. So that's not needed. Okay, now. And, oh, I was expecting another end. Okay, so let's, let's see, if, else, else, okay. Ah, there we go. We've got our, our opening of our register, and then we've got our closing, which closes right there. So we got our one, two, three, and, and, and. Okay, we got if. Ah, there we go. We forgot to add in. So that's if, and if, if, else if and if so now it should work and this is a good thing about running ajax that you don't have to refresh the page you just click on it there we go so uh please provide a real email address we add our dot right there and then we remove our at still tells us to do it then we add in our at and there you go it jumps us over to there 
So, this is a good way to make sure that the email address at least follows the guidelines of being a real email address. Does not not mean that it's going to be a real email address. On CFFCS.com's website, I get in at least three or four bogus email addresses per week. People think that they can just type in their username and password on the site and they can gain access to it with it being a bogus email address. Okay, people, plain and simple, grow up. The internet has gotten a little bit more sophisticated since it started back in the 90s. All right, most of your websites, most, not all of them, most of your websites will check the email address by sending you out an email to let you register. Okay, so you got to confirm the email address on Coding Source in order for you to be able to uh, go onto the site and obtain. I don't see why people think it's such a big deal to download free stuff from a website. Okay, it's beyond me, childish, ignorant, whatever you want to call it. That's basically what it is. So, but there is a way to go in to check to see if the email address is actually a real valid email address. But I don't have access to that code. It is available, and you have to purchase it. Okay, one of these days I will purchase it whenever I start making money from my websites. Yay, sounds like fun. So anyway, this right here is the first part of our lesson. This uh, concludes lesson number one. So uh, what we're going to do is that we will jump into lesson number two, and which will be the creating of the database, and also how to protect our um, input information from SQL and XSS injections, which XSS is for JavaScript codes. And so what we're going to do is that we will um, explore those and create our code to make sure that our, um, our, uh, our, uh, our database is kept um, nice and without being infected. Because let's face it, there's people at least a million hits a day are being hit on websites. Okay, PHP is the world's most active hit script. Okay, I get in about 100 plus per domain. Okay, because I've got a script that looks for all 404 errors. So I get in over 100 a day attacks on my PHP and I don't even run PHP. You would think that they would get the hint, okay? I run strictly ASP. I don't run nothing else. I do have a couple of upload scripts that are ASP.NET, but not PHP. But yet, they get hit. PHP is, is one of the most hit scripts that I've ever seen in my life. Okay, so anyway, that's why I choose ASP Classic. It's simple, it's easy, it's fun to use, and it makes designing your websites a whole lot nicer. So anyway, this is Wayne Barron. This is Lesson 1 of our set of ASP Classic lessons, and I hope that you uh, at least got going in this one. And uh, once again, we will be jumping into the next one. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish this one up, upload it to y'all so y'all can go ahead and get started. And remember, it's not gonna have the download until the very last tutorial is uploaded to YouTube. Then on that description, you will be able to download the tutorial. So anyway, I hope that y'all enjoyed this uh, uh, jump start into it. And uh, once again, this is Wayne Barron from CFFCS.com Coding Source. Y'all have a rocking weekend, and part two is coming today, I promise. Thank you.